Let's first consider what is happening to the average GMAT scores at some of the top schools. What we have here is a list of the top 10 schools in the US and we have sorted it based on the average GMAT score of accepted students in each of these schools. Let's pick a school, Stanford. Stanford expects its applicants to have a staggering GMAT score of 733. And remember, this is just the average. That means there are people who have actually gotten more than the score as well. Now, even if you go all the way down to the school on number 10, even the lowest school on the list averages around 750. The story remains very similar even for Indian B schools such as the ISB or the IIMs for their one-year program. This means that if you are looking at any of the top 20-25 schools globally, your job is to get as high a GMAT score as possible. I often have students come and tell me that Arun, it's unfair that we are being tested based on our GMAT scores. Well, if the GMAT scores are low, the schools may not even look into your profile. So let me ask you, what is it that GMAT is really testing you? Okay, so let's dig a little deeper into this. I want you to realize that the star Stanford's and the Harvard's of the world have figured out all the data they need. Students come in every year into their programs and eventually get placed into top corporates. So a lot of these schools work very closely with the recruiters and they are looking at a certain type of profile. So you may ask, what is it that these schools and these recruiters, maybe it's a technology company like Google or Microsoft or uh, Meta, uh, maybe they are hiring for product managers, or maybe uh, it could be a consulting firm like McKinsey, BCG, uh, or maybe the Deloitte's and the KPMG's of the world. What is it that they are really looking at that the B school also wants, right? Uh, especially since consulting companies recruit heavily from top MBA programs. Uh, or you could even be looking at getting into operations, supply chain, uh, or uh, into the manufacturing sector. There are senior management roles in these companies. What is it that they are really looking for? Well, there are a few essential skills that B-Schools think you need in order to thrive in the corporate world, especially in corporate US. What are these skills and how does the B-School really assess you on these skills? Let's look at the first skill. It's your ability to read large amounts of data, not really memorize it, but sift through it so that you can get the information you need. So the question is, can you get a bird's eye view of the topic and the content given so that you can deep dive and know what specific piece of information to retrieve at any point? There is so much of information in today's world. Your ability to structure this information and know where to look for is an essential skill. This is nothing but reading comprehension. And that is really what the GMAT will test you on. Now, if you look at the second skill, right? Uh, it's your ability to look at data. See, if you want to be a product manager, you need to be able to look at data and ask yourself, how does this really help us? Is this information beneficial? Is this information important for the case at hand? How do I draw conjectures? How do I draw inferences? How do I arrive at conclusions? What is this? This is nothing but critical reasoning on the GMAT. And during the course, you will see a lot of scenarios that will mimic the real world. So GMAT is really trying to simulate what you will do when you are in that corporate job two to three years down the line. Now, all of this information, all of your ideas is of no use unless you can use the analysis with data. And that's where maths comes in. And if you look at GMAT maths, it's probably 8th or 9th standard maths, right? There is no complex calculation. There is no trigonometry or calculus. It is the basic arithmetic, algebra and geometry that you have already learned. The question is, is the data provided to me enough to answer the questions at hand? That is what data sufficiency will test you on. How agile are you working with these numbers and how do you understand the connections will, between these numbers will form the crux of problem solving. And if you're looking at a career in management, I should tell you one last thing. The fourth and the most essential element is your ability to present and express your thoughts in clear, concise language. And that is really what sentence correction is testing you on. I hope you realize that your journey to the top position in your career starts with the GMAT itself. Apply the business mindset when it comes to solving GMAT questions. Don't get stressed. 
be curious about it there is something you will always learn you will see that even when you get into a b school your reading comprehension skills will help you get through case studies your ability to understand how a sentence is structured will help you when you're presenting your thoughts in front of your classmates a lot of what you will learn today is just the start of a journey that will continue for many more years especially if you're committed to a career in management i would like to leave you with one last thing Look at the GMAT journey as an investment in yourself and try to enjoy the learning process. Our course is structured to help you enjoy the GMAT because we feel that if you enjoy studying for the GMAT, the whole process becomes a lot easier. In the following videos, we will dig a little deeper into the GMAT, the test structure, the algorithms, and even some tips on how you can study effectively over the next few months.